Hi there and welcome to another Getting Started With series. Plenty of Getting Started With series episodes for me to do. I still have Spartak Moscow, VFB Stuttgart, Hertha Berlin, Real Star Belgrade, uh, Fulham, Chelsea, Real Sociedad, uh, Flamenco, I haven't done that yet. Uh, that definitely is on the list. That may even be the next one. So, um, so here we go. We have Nottingham Forest. We're back in England. We're in the championship with uh, a... V a sentimental club for me, yeah. Forest, uh, a lot of uh, history with this club, man. Uh, a lot of nice history as well. Um, so when you join Nottingham Forest, you again, another one of those clubs that doesn't believe in you, <laughs> gives you a one-year contract. Uh, you go through the normal induction screen. Of course, you can You can go, tr I mean, if I were you, I'd go through the whole experience. But because I'm doing a getting started with series, I want to get right into it. Uh, you've got five weeks of preseason. This is important, 25th of June. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find out how many friendies you have. If you can, immediately go in there and add at least one more friendly, right? So you need about six to get your boys ready for the season. So if you come in here, we'll arrange, uh, they call Kashalton, Mansfield, Olympiacos, Notts County. This is pretty good. Uh, this 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 group of matches, Olympiacos, Notts County, uh, will give us a chance to find out where we, st where we stand. So probably the first... Uh, First match, I'm just going to send my boys out, let them get nah, just a training match of sorts. Uh, we'll have a match against the IHB because Olympiacos is really uh, the test for us in preseason to see how we, we come along. Uh, the second thing you want to do is you want to go through all this, your, your preseason preparation and any players that are going to join the club. So we only have one Ben Barret Breton who's on loan at uh, Blackburn. Uh, he's going to be joining them permanently from Nottingham Forest to Blackburn, which is a bit, for me, yeah, it's a bit of a disappointment because he is not a bad player. Uh, he's left the club. Um, why do I think he's not a bad player? I mean, he's off the ball. He's finishing. They, they're all there, you know. They, they're good enough for the championship. Uh, I am not a big fan of letting my strikers go early. And then we've got uh, players from Benfica coming down to the club. Uh, very strong players, Carvalho, who's a... Pretty good inside forward, uh, pretty good attacking midfielder. Uh, he can play as a winger, as an inside forward coming in from the left flank. If he comes in from the left flank, uh, which which is uh, which is apparent because they got their attacking midfielder left and centre, right? So you play him on the left, he's definitely going to be more suited to being a uh, inside forward, cutting in and going for goal. Which means that you train him as an inside forward, and you know. He's got, he's got plenty of potential. He's well suited for the club and definitely a player you want to hang on to as much as possible right? because he's got a lot of potential. Then we've got Diego Goncalves, another. Uh, this He is more of a winger, okay, but he will cut inside as well. So you've got players that are, who can play on the right flank uh, or the left flank and they both cut inside. It means that if you play a... Winger, even if you play a winger-based system, your wing-backs can, can come up the pitch quite easily because your forward players are going to be cutting inside a lot. So this, the transfer signings have been very interesting. Then they've got Gil Diaz, who's on loan uh, from AS Monaco. Uh, another player. Now, this is a pretty interesting signing because this guy is an out-and-out -out winger. Um, so... <laughs> The t problem with having now having a winger on loan, so he's on loan, okay, he's going to be a winger and we've got another really good player who's come in on a transfer, we've spent quite a lot of money on him, he comes in from the left and he's an inside forward. So what do we do? So it's either we play him on the right flank and he comes in as a, uh, he, we play him as a, a winger basically on the right flank but he'll be cutting inside on his right foot and then he'll just drill crosses into the left onto uh, onto the left flank and then we've got this guy who's on loan from Monaco who can come in he is also a damn good winger so it means that what we really want to focus our attention on is the players that can uh, bury all the chances that have been created because you've got white players who definitely add a lot of att uh, attacking momentum to this team. So we are now in transfer season. As you can see, all the news is out for the transfer market. Well, if you're interested in that kind of thing, then by all means. Now, the second thing we want to do is naturally go into 
the coaching and the coaching room as you can see defending is pretty strong right so how do we find that out a bit more detail we got a coaches here edit coach assignments as you can see in the defending arena you, i've got myself there you got three stars here you got basically in at this level of football um three stars is going to be quite good uh, if you can get a four star coach it'll be even better but uh, right now um we probably want to talk to the board and see whether we can get more coaches in now the board have no concerns about the size at the present time it doesn't harm there's no harm in going to the board and going straight for before okay i wouldn't do it the moment i get the job i'll wait for like a, a day a week at least then i'll go to the board and ask them to increase the coaching size so that we can lighten the load so if i go in now and ask the coaches chances are they might say no uh yep they have decided to give us the extra numbers number of coaches have been increased so it's so it makes sense so they've given us a chance to go out there and get a coach so what kind of a coach are you going to get so we've got room for two more coaches now they are very nice to us so what i would would do here is uh the first coach i will probably line up is somebody who can do defense fitness training yeah, because that's going to be important for us that's one coach the second coach will probably be an area in an area where we want to improve in the long run and i'll probably gonna look for possession tactical so this would mean that i'm looking for a mental tactical coach these are very hard to come by so it really it depends on what you can find so you go to staff search uh, add a condition uh, attributes uh, coaching uh, mental and then add another condition for attributes of uh, coaching and tactical and we already have like Dejan Stankovic drop it down to about 14 and we've got Portsmouth coach Mark Chamberlain who's not that bad actually um determination discipline and motivating fairly high so let's see if Mark Chamberlain is willing to come in here as a as a coach for the first team so we'll talk to him he's yep he's interested uh and we'll suggest terms to him if he wants the top division wage rise that's fine and we we actually got a coach in so that's the first coach the second coach will probably be um i would definitely go for fitness and i will remove tactical and just uh find see whether i can find one a coach who is uh pretty strong in the department okay so you're gonna have sometimes sports scientists make good coaches so i would look at the coach and um check this out but 16 fitness determination discipline motivating very high approach assign him coach he says yes you know he wants to be a sports scientist we'll we'll wait for that um we definitely need a sports scientist as well so we've got one sports scientist one chief doctor one head physio mm. We could actually get a head of sports science, but he's only 11 for sports science, so we don't want him to be a sports scientist. Mark Amitaj, uh, fitness, not so good. Ian Campbell, assistant manager, not so good. Ben Clarkson. I'm looking at determination, discipline, and motivating, right? So I'm looking for a number. In my head, I'm looking for at least 40 or 38 and high, 39 and higher. So this guy is not too bad. Uh, Joan Collins, but I doubt he's going to come in as, oh, he's willing to come in as a coach. Uh, all right yep so we've got another coach now so we've got another fitness coach um the last area is going to be sport science so attributes uh, mental sport science sticking about 15 we've got quite a number we've got it doesn't their personality won't matter um sport scientist 15 this is pretty nice or oh, we'll just go up one more notch um Stuart hackett it's okay um 17 pretty solid 16 chris moran 16 and jamie taylor is 16 so we'll hire we'll ask this guy whether he wants to be the head of sport science um medical and suggest terms and we'll finalize the deal and we've got our head of sport science in because i am a strong believer that you need to get more than one physio as well so you've got any chief doctors we've got only one head physio so we'll get another physio in so man we got uh physiotherapy um the higher the better 
So we've got a couple here. Grain Desmond, um, 18 for physiotherapy. We got 18. Um, okay, so we got Gross Grady, uh, Andy Harrison. We got there are so many physios that you can you can select from, but we'll just pick one. Um, I'm sure that uh, people will have their own opinions on what kind of sports uh, physiotherapist uh, is going to be good for the club. But generally, you can't go wrong uh, with physios. We got currently n we don't hit have enough physios in the main team, so we'll get one, and then we'll sign another physio uh, here as a physio so we've got two physios he wants a higher wage i'll just come in here and give him a yearly wage rise of about um 20 percent so he's agreed so he's come in so we've strengthened the medical team we've strengthened the coaching team first things first i haven't even looked at the team yet okay now let's uh take a look at the U squad because i like to look i like to start from the bottom and go up so we got under ooh. I straight away see five stars and I'm looking at display and I'm going, hmm, I like Smyton. Attacking midfielder right and left, 16 years old. Yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna um move him to the senior squad so he can get um tutored as well. So his personality is balanced. So we might want to move him into the main squad, right? So we got him, we move him to the main squad. And then when we we find Alex Smyton again, which is this is the pain in the ass. Okay, then we make him available for the under 19s uh, for 90 minutes. So uh, he's now in the main squad, but he will he will train with the main team players only because we wanna we wanna extract the best out of him. So we've got another player here called Brennan Johnson, also balanced, also another attacking midfield in the center. Uh, we will also move him to the senior squad. Go to the senior squad again. Um, find the player and then squad. Make him available for the under 18s for 90 minutes. We've done that. So we've we identified two youngsters who are going to add a lot to the main team. What about the under 23s? We've got these players. They're either on loan or they play in the first team. If you have somebody who's got a lot of potential like this boy. I would rather move him to the first team and try and play him or put him out on loan. So he definitely is now moved to the senior squad. Um, there's and this we've got other players here. Then Dayaki Darikwa. So if he's not playing in the first team, right? So we gotta put him on loan. Um, but he's not too bad actually. Okay, so we are going to. I'm gonna move him to the senior squad because there's no point keeping them here. Um, there's another player here. This this guy with the players that are coming in on loan, um, he's not going to be, um, he's not going to be useful. He's not going to get a chance to play. This defender is not too bad. Jump Irish of 13. Then we've got another defender here who needs to be on loan. So we've got a couple of players here that we have they have identified as players that can be on loan. But what we've done is we've take we've taken care of the ones that potentially can play in the first team. So we move them into the first team. Now I worry about now we're looking at dynamics, right? So I'm gonna look at the hierarchy because we've got Gwen Gwen Guedora. Okay. So he's a midfielder, Algerian, 32 years old with a balanced personality. Hmm. Ben Watson, fairly professional. He's a defensive midfielder, so he, he'll probably be a decent tutor. But Michael Dawson, fairly determined, okay. Uh, and Ben Osborne, um, winger, balanced. So we don't really have... If you go to training right now and you say, hey, let's go do mentoring, right? <laughs> You're not going to be surprised. Everybody's average light light. So we don't have a lot of fantastic uh, mentors in the club. we got these guys. Uh, there's one more just now. I noticed that we had a personality that was fairly professional, Ben Watson, right? Um, he's on rotation. Definitely won't won't play. He won't play a big part in influencing our players. Uh, fairly professional. We got Luke Steele, Jack Robinson, Michael Dawson, who's uh, fairly determined. He's okay, uh, but he's he's really slow. Uh, at this age, so uh, we don't even know whether he's going to be playing a lot of games. So uh, we'll just leave this as the group that's going to be mentored. As you can see, um, the boys that were promoted, they're going to be working closely with Ben Osborne. Hopefully, um, Matt. In fact, I wouldn't even bother because this group is it's not going to do very much for these two youngsters. So they're going to train with the main team, but I don't see their um. 
they're gonna be um i don't see their mentoring that mentoring is gonna have a major effect so long-term policy we're gonna have to play players who have got very good uh, personalities and hope that they can get into the first team so when we're looking i, I will probably start identifying players with strong personalities fit them into my tactic with the goal that in the long run the, in the hierarchy i want to see some of these players moving up so michael dawson is a bit old we got ben osborne who's balanced personality he's not gonna he's not gonna be much of a team leader guedora is a balanced personality so who who is gonna come up who's the star of this team um all balanced personalities so if i'm looking at through this whole club we only got one resolute here who's good uh liam bridcut okay so he's gonna become a first team player so Dani, striker perfectionist is not too bad so we've got a we've got players like this who are going to be uh very good um leaders of the team so bridcut i want these players to move up the ranks how they're going to move up the ranks is probably going to be down to how you play and how you uh, set your team up and players like this nomadic nomadic strikers uh then we got claudio Jakob, who's also 30 years old getting on in age fairly ambitious so you want to look for the right personalities you want to play them a lot hopefully they move up the club hierarchy and then they become fantastic team leaders so this is a long-term plan uh, now that if I looked at the club and uh, identify whether mentoring is going to be useful, not really at this moment. So mentoring isn't really going to be useful, but we're just going to leave it there for them because I've got nothing better to do with this team. Okay, so second thing uh, we're going to look at is um, the uh, tactics for this team and what can they play. Uh, team report is the first thing that I'll do. I'll do. Uh, in fact, we're going to look at the squad first and see what we have available. Right, so we're going to remove the defenders. So generally, this is the championship. So we're looking at between 13, 14 to be these, uh, to be good attributes, right? So defenders, uh, we're looking at defend DNA, jumping 16, 17 is very good. Positioning 13, 14 is very good. So we've got pretty solid defenders. Uh, in terms of technicals, uh, we're looking at marking 13, 12, 12, okay. Tackling pretty decent. So the Nottingham Forest backline, full faith in this back line okay what about the the wing backs so we'll look at the the wing backs now uh we've got jack robinson um who's one who can play in the center it can be a wing back not too bad sado yanko is on loan from porto okay okay going forward defensively so so then we've got tendayaki Derek wa uh, this is the one i promoted yeah okay yeah, it's a good move that we promoted him. We need him. Uh, so we've got we don't have a lot of options in the left back department, as you can see. We only have one. So now we're gonna look at under 23 squad to see whether there's anybody from the under 23 squad that can be promoted. We got Jack Ro only Jack Robinson, then we've got Danny Preston, mm, so so Adam Crooks on loan at Lincoln, not so good. Ooh, we are running into a slight problem here. Yes. Scouting priority, left back. This team, this club does not have a left back cover. So we don't have a left back. So we need to go out there and find a left back. Right back, uh, they have they have one player who's injured. But I think he's on, he's not, he's, uh, he's on loan from West Ham. We got Sado, Jenko on loan from Porto. And we got this player. So we got two loan signings. So we're going to try, we, I, I don't think we got enough room to make any more loan signings because this club has got quite a number of loan signings. Uh, yeah, we got Diogo Goncalves, that's three. Gil Dias, that's four. So we got one loan signing, two loan signings, three, four. We got four loan signings. Um, yeah, we have, uh, we have one, two, three four we can afford one more loan signing so that's the only that's the only player that you can sign all right so we need a left back defenders are fairly strong let's look at our defensive midfielders again here we're looking at just i just i'm just looking at the positioning okay we know claudio Jakob is a very good um deep line playmaker and a defense jack colback can definitely plays on loan from new 
Newcastle. Got Liam Bridcut, uh, Ryan Yates. Okay, we can play him as well. Um, he can play as a. Now he can play in quite a few roles because uh, this guy is quite versatile. So we can definitely play him in different kind of roles and train him. Ben Watson, we know him. Um, he's half. He's uh, an experienced player, an experienced playmaker as well. But he's a bit slow. Uh, then we got this uh, Bangiotis Taxidis. What a name! Slow, not ideal for this club. Um, he could play as uh, stopgap measures. So you got three defensive midfielders, right? And we got we got players with some decent flair. Okay, comes deep to get the ball. Can play as a can play in a variety of positions. So if I'm looking at this team. Um, we're looking at a 4-1-2-2-1, four, two, two, four, a back four, um, with uh, potentially three midfielders. You can play a 4-3-1-2, you can play a lopsided 4-3-1-2 as well. So I'm looking at 4-1-2-2-1, two, two, a 4-3-1-2. These are the main tactics I'm going to be looking at this team. Uh, they could play a 4-2-3-1, that's also possible. Because they have the, the, the players in front to do the business. So let's look at strikers. First, I'm zooming at Daryl Murphy. Uh, he's a very senior player in the squad. Uh, and uh, finishing 14-13, pretty solid target man to play balls off. So you've got a target man option in front. Um, and then we got Sudani. Sudani is uh, probably one of the strikers in this team. Uh, but Thames away kicks, always using weaker foot. Comes in on his left foot to score. Finishing is okay. Then we got Louis Graban. I like him. Uh, he's a pretty decent striker. Um, probably he can start most games. You got you have like a one-two striker option. Brandon Johnson is just here because we're training him. Okay, so we have our strikers. We have players that can play through the middle. We have got defensive midfielders. What we don't have is a left back. So now immediately we go to the scouting department. The general focus is going to be short term, new short term focus. We want a left back. Uh, you know, we can go any role on the left. Basically, we're desperate at the moment. I will go from 1 to 28. Typically, 28 weeks. Uh, player style, we want somebody who's physical because I need the physical attributes more than I need the mental attributes at the moment. So, uh, with typically availability, current ability shouldn't be too. We want somebody who can get into the first team. Minimum potential ability is 2.5. If I get 2.5, then this player is not half decent so he's not going to be good enough to beat any of our players so set the focus and they're off they're looking for players now we can go to the list and see what else they have in the list but apparently so the next thing we want to do is we want to find a player preferably free <laughs> so <laughs> it's not going to be easy um we're going to look we're going to bring down the uh, requirements quite a fair bit um and then hopefully uh, our scouts can go out there and find some players. So we've got a couple of players here. Passing, acceleration, 13, positioning, 12. Oh, la, la, we got Josh Diamond. <laughs> Contracted to Stoke. Uh, value is 750000 We've got a budget of only uh, 485000 We can actually go to them and um, transfer, make an offer. Loan offer, not allowed. Mm, I'm very surprised they don't want to. So they're not going to loan him. We c You can't afford to find any players, right? So they're not going to come. Uh, what we have here is other Scott Goldman, 30 years old, who's available on a free signing. Now, I'm lo just looking at his attributes. These attributes are good enough. So we can definitely ask him to come to the club. Javier Bonilla, uh, 14, acceleration, 9. Carl Tremaco, not enough here to for me to get excited, but definitely worth scouting. Uh, then we've got Sergio Regolin, um, who's uh, 475,000 Spanish uh, player. That's a youngster. He might be, he might be worth uh, on bringing, him on, bringing that player in on a loan. So we're going to scout this two players from the scouting pool for two weeks. In the meantime, we're going to sign Scott Goldman. Long-term plans, plans for the club are promotion. Now, who doesn't want to get promoted? So we're going to ask Mr. Scott Goldman to come to the club. 
the next thing we want to do is you want to make sure our players are ready for the season ahead. So one of the things I normally do is I give them a lot of uh, physical training at the start. They might get injured, but hell, it's a price you pay for success. <laughs> I'm serious, really. I, 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 re I recommend pushing them to the limit. Of course, you want to make sure that you've got your sports scientists in the club before you do this. I mean, if you don't have them sports scientists in the club and you decide to go this route and you have players that are getting injured, then don't look at me because you didn't have your sports scientists in the club. So you need your sports scientists in the club so that you can do Hell Week. So this is like Hell Week and this isn't, this isn't even Hell Week. This is like mild Hell Week. I've got more aggressive pre-seasons so where I actually go in and I have a lot of a, a lot of a heavy training. You can even come here pre-season and come in here and go heavy early so this is a heavy early preseason you can do another one here heavy mid pick this one and then you got another one um keep i am strongly in favor of heavy preseason so you get all your preseason out then after that start working on um the tactical side of things so you can go scenario you can do training style we can go um Start doing technical training for the team. Um, you can fit in. If you want to fit in more, you can. You can make your routines a bit more aggressive. But generally, uh, this is basically how I do things. You can even try the recommendations out. Um, your training style, technical. Um, but here in preseason, I normally have... Uh, I normally don't like... If I'm still in preseason, it's going to be a heavy preseason. Uh, technical late tactical heavy late yeah heavy late so they i work on physical stuff more than anything else heavy mid and then towards the tail end of preseason that's where we start working on uh things like uh technicals and tacticals right so we got tech technical late the whole idea here is to get tactical familiarity with our system because uh, we play Bristol City here. So by this time, I will already be looking at stuff like um, my training sessions will become very different right leading up to the first match of the season. So we've done most of our training now um, and we've set things up. Okay, so the second thing we want to do is uh, accept the season expectations. Uh, everything is looking okay now let's it's time to meet the boys okay introduce it oh before we meet the boys the first thing you want to do is find out the uh odds for your club well top half of the table that's the expectation so let's go meet the boys uh i want to take up a look i'm very positive nope nope top half the season everybody's happy go Contract talks beginning appear. You want to be a backup appearance fee. I don't like doing appearance fees. I'll give you a bit more because uh, this will be cheaper than giving him an appearance fee because I do expect him to play quite a lot of matches. So I reject because if you know your club well enough, you don't have to do the intra squad friendly. It's just a waste of time. Uh, D to meet the media. I will not be meeting the media naturally. I advise you to go meet the media because it's your long-term safe. So we've got a couple of four tactics that we're going to try in pre-season. Most of, most of these I picked up from all my other safes. So we've got like a um, 4 5 one camping tactic that I use with Staley Bridge some of the time. Then we got four one two three dm white We're just going to um, try this out in pre-season, see how our team does, and then go from there. We've got plenty of matches to try stuff out and we're going to leave it with, uh, for me right now, I'm probably going to play the matches and see how this team does. So we played our first game of the season, a 4-2 win over Bristol City, even after having a man sent off fairly early, 61st minute. We, had, we didn't even change our tactic. We just left that spot vacant on the pitch and just carried on using the 4-1-2-2-1. And uh, we dominated the game. Um, I won't say like we... we even with even going down a man, I didn't feel like we were in trouble. We did concede goals from corners and set pieces, which is a bit of a concern. Uh, the first goal was really nice. Well, the first goal really came from um, us controlling the ball. We actually used Daryl Murphy. 
the old man who's a pretty decent target man so he held the ball up pretty well took his own sweet time to get into the box because of his space and then goal Kafe smashed the ball and we got a, our first goal own goal very nice uh, i was pretty happy with that and then um the second goal um the second goal was pretty interesting because it featured a lot of uh there was a lot of uh recycling of possession cash playing it to go and cover this this goal is going to take a fair fair amount of time before we see it into the back of the net so i like the way um the boys uh control possession in the opponent's half they were playing with a reasonably high line and the ball goes wide they clear the danger we pick it up again and we start all over so call call back back to cash and this time cash looks around plays it back to the wing back on the right call back then plays it uh through to osborne who's playing as a mazala and we score a second goal so we goes like this i wasn't surprised that uh we were able to beat um uh, bristol city 4-2 on top of that i was pretty confident in the fact that we didn't need to uh make changes to our tactic uh, we brought Hilal Sudani and then we scored uh, the uh, next two goals after that um, after 10 minutes um, and what would I recommend people use with uh, Nottingham Forest well um, well Algon Calves is uh, now injured for two weeks but I definitely recommend using him uh, if you don't have him available Joe Lolly can come in on the on the right flank and basically do what he's doing uh, and still be in a uh, good position to score a goal. Carvalho is the winger on, on support on the left flank, but in case he's not available, there are players on the bench who can come in and play in that role. Uh, we can always play with Louis Graban up top, Murphy as a target man, or you can switch to the other uh, 4 one 2 3, which is also viable with this team. Uh, then you can place um, um, the striker Sudani and ask him to be uh, pressing forward on top. Essentially the same team, except this time you play Osborne as a playmaker. Now this is a slight difference. Uh, you might want to change this to a wing bound support when you start playing the game. Uh, I only use this as a wing bound attack when I'm very confident of taking a team on. Um, one thing with the lack of left backs in Nottingham Forest, Something that I would definitely consider doing is changing this role to an inverted wing back when I need to. So this is also possible. And th this is where you have the wealth of uh, defensive midfielders in Forest to rely on. So Forest have got defensive midfielders who can step into that position and take over. Uh, players like Ben Watson, Claudio Jacob. You've got so many players here who Liam Burkett, uh, they can all step in as an inverted wing back. And that those are options that you will have in your team. And you've got a lot of players that can play in this position. If you don't want to use um, our fresh signing called Scott, Gulb Scott Goulburn, who is a cover uh, for the left back position. In case uh, we need one, we have one on the bench and he's, he's a free signing. It comes in and adds 525,000 value to your club. Not bad for a free signing. Uh, so this is how I recommend you set up. So pay, you need to pay a lot of attention to set pieces as well because um, at the back, while you have a few players who are half decent, um, you might end up in situations where you're vulnerable to set pieces. So make sure that when you set up your tactics, pay attention to the far post, near post and and your general set piece set up well i hope you enjoyed this edition of getting started with um, nottingham forest this is going to be a very interesting site to uh, manage in this uh, edition of fm19 so i wish you guys the best of luck if you have any questions please look me up on twitter at bustanet or addicted to fm.com my website once again i'd like to thank all my patrons for the continued support of this channel and make this kind of show possible for the rest of the community you guys take care have a good one i'll see you again soon Bye bye <laughs>